Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Phoenix, Arizona, it's time for Phoenix Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. This is Jody Lowe with You and Improved and the Leadership Lowdown, powered by both You and Improved and Conscious Capitalism Arizona. Leadership Lowdown is a radio series dedicated to shining a spotlight on Valley leaders. Their rise to the top, the struggles, the triumphs, the pitfalls, all that goes into being a business leader. And today I am so thrilled to be welcoming a new friend of mine. I, I'm going to call you a friend, Thad, because I feel after a, a long weekend of leadership development together, I know you quite well. Thad Fitzgerald, he is one of the partners at Grease Monkey here in Arizona. So welcome to the show. So happy to have you here. Thank you very much, Jody. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So Grease Monkey, first of all, the name in and of itself is just too much fun. But uh, tell us a little bit about the company, what you do there. It's just a little bit of an audience attention grabber, if you will, about what it is that you all you all handle. All right. So Grease Monkey was originally established in 1982 out of Denver, Colorado. They came to Phoenix in 2009. It didn't go so well for that company, unfortunately. Um, so we came down in 2015 and we produced, we opened up three shops in 18 months. Yeah. Um, we're a very aggressive company. I'm from Cody, Wyoming. I spent 30 years up there. I'm a 22 plus year uh, automotive and diesel tech. I'm a master certified Harley mechanic. I do small engines. So I, pretty much anything with a motor I can take care of. Um, <laughs> Grease Monkey itself is we strive to be the most honest shop in Phoenix. We try to do a 25 minute or less oil change and we get you in and out as quick as possible because we know everybody's time is super valuable. Yep. We, we don't force sell. So when you come in and get our services, we top off all your fluids. All of our oil changes are five quarts of oil with a new filter. Um, and then we just produce like if you need new filters, we bring in the old one and bring in a new one and we show you what it is, tell you the price. And then we give you the option to make the choice on your own to see if you would decide that you would like that service or not. I don't Love want it. it to be like going to a used car lot and where you're just for sale everything. Are they going to tell you your car is going to blow up and you're not going to make it down the street? That's not us. Yeah. And so we have a very good rapport with our customers. I have an 80% return rate. I have a five-star review on Google, Yelp. Um, and on Facebook, we have a good review. Um, I talk to dads, moms, brothers, uncles, cousins. I'll FaceTime with them. Uh, we'll physically show you everything that we're doing because we do full mechanical as well. So that way there's no question. You don't have to worry about like when you leave our shop, you're not, man, did I get the best deal? Did that guy sell me something that I don't need? Mm -hmm. um, we never want you to wonder about that. So yeah. it, it really is. I tell people, nobody ever left my shop saying, man, that's the best oil I ever put in my car. You yeah. don't even know what oil I put in your car, but you know, if I was polite, you know, if we were kind, you know, if you left with a smile, you know what I mean? It's, it, it truly is about customer service. So that's what we sell. I so, love it. I love it. Well, in, in, in an industry like yours where, you know, no offense, but let's call it what it is. It's not known to be the most honest and forthright industry. There are a lot of, you know, bad, bad apples that spoil the bunch, if you will. So it's wonderful to know that there's another great option in town and, and somebody that's obviously very passionate about what he does in, uh, you know, in getting to know you just recently. Um, my gosh, you, you know, the, the passion for what you do is not just there, but it's overwhelming bad. So I love that about you. You uh, definitely bring that um, excitement, even after 22 years of doing what you do. So um, tell, tell us a little bit about that in that for you too. So you said you have 22 years experience in diesel and Harleys and all these wonderful things. You were born though in California, if I remember correctly. And then did you spend any time out there or you went straight to Wyoming or how did how did that journey go for you? I was born in Chico, California. Okay. Um, I moved to Cody, Wyoming in 1984. So I was five years old. Okay. Um, that's where my mom grew up. So that's where he moved back to. Yep. Uh, my, my real dad lived in California, owned a construction company. So I'd go out there every summer and visit him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've traveled quite a bit uh, mm -hmm. back and forth and doing that kind of stuff. So I'm very versatile. I grew up on a ranch and a town called Matitsi, Wyoming, which is the most commonly misspelled town in America. It's M-E-E-T-E-E-T-S-E. -E 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 -E. It's like Mississippi with ease. There's a lot of ease, yes. Uh, a lot of ease. <laughs> um, the town's 400 people. My graduating class was 12. So oh my it's, definitely, it's definitely a culture shock when you come down to Arizona and there's more people in one area of Phoenix than there is in the whole state of Wyoming. There's oh my still gosh. 100,000 people there. Um, wow. Wow. And now you, you came to Phoenix because of Grease Monkey, right? Is that what brought you here? Correct. Okay. My, okay. One of my business partners is from Phoenix. Uh -huh. um, he is in the law world. So he was kind of looking to do something else in life. 
Got and it. so we were always looking for different ventures. Um, and we were really looking for something that you can't sell on the internet, mm-hmm. uh, which is this. So yeah. um, all of my partners bring something to the table. Um, obviously, mine is the actual work on the cars. That's what my experience is. So that's mm-hmm. my responsibility. My official title for um, Grease Monkey is I'm the director of operations. Mm-hmm. I became a partner after the first year. I originally came down here just to help them find a manager. Then we realized how complicated that was going to be. Yeah. So it became me. I um, love it. Love it. Yeah. It's, and so, so when you were growing up, was this always just a passion of yours or how did you get into this, this field or this industry? I have a natural mechanical ability. So ever since I was about five, I've just been taking stuff apart and putting it back together. <laughs> um, and then when I got my first car, it needed a clutch and I took it to the mechanic and the guy's like, Oh, it'll be 400 bucks. And I'm like, great. I went home, told my folks and they just started laughing. And they're like, well, you better get a job because we're not giving you 400 bucks. <laughs> and then my stepdad came home with a book and a clutch and I learned how to do it myself. And then I just realized that that was the best option for me was just to start doing things on my own. So I started helping my buddies and then we got into motorcycles and I couldn't afford to pay anybody when I was young. Sure. So I just started taking things apart because that's what I'm good at. And just, figuring out how to put it back together. And we just started doing everything on our own. Um, I worked for a tire shop when I was 19 years old and I went through their whole process. I did the tires. I learned how to do the mechanical there. I did all their alignments. I did all their service calls. So then before I knew it, I was out on my own doing all this stuff for them. Right. And I, right. And I realized that, you know, after all that time, I could just do it for myself. That's um, incredible. So it was really just kind of trial and error and figuring it out as you go and, and learning. And then that wasn't even the day of the internet. So you literally came home with a book. You didn't Google anything. <laughs> you were, you had right. a book in your hand. <laughs> there was an angry old man sitting in the shop that was 80 years old. And he used to tell you how bad you were. And there oh. wasn't internet and there wasn't all data and there wasn't Google or any of that stuff. Sure. And so it was just that intimidation fear factor when I was a kid. And I mean, it really just got you through because they were like, Hey, you just have to do it. So you, you just did it. Like Now guys are, they're afraid to take things apart. I'm not afraid to take anything apart. I I don't care if it's my first time or my last time, everything, like you just take it apart. It's, it's, you just lay it out. You you don't need a book. It's really easy to figure out once you have that ability and which I was blessed with. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when I decided to advance my career, I had my first son um, in 2001. And then my ex was uh, pregnant with my second son. And I decided that I wanted to be a motorcycle mechanic. Okay. I got the opportunity to go to a school called AMI in Daytona Beach, Florida. I had a, I literally had a six month turnaround time before my son was born. So I went and got a bunch of grants. I borrowed the money so my ex could just stay home and not work. And then I went and I went to Daytona Beach and I went and got my certification because Harley wouldn't hire me without it. Wow. And so from, from that experience, from, from getting that certification, did you go to work for Harley or did you? What was the journey? I I bothered those guys every week with my grades um, Uh until they gave me a job. And then every break I got, I went to the shop and personally talked to the the service manager. And I just hounded them until they gave me the job because I knew I needed to live in Billings. It wasn't an option for me because that was the closest dealership to where I was. And I didn't want to live someplace else. Um, So I just made sure that I did a great job until they gave me the job. And then I worked for those guys for about four years. Uh Um, I became master certified in three years. I ended up getting their dealership proved for a SRL, which is a service retail location down in Cody, Wyoming. And then I was literally a one man shop. So I did all the parts ordering. I did all the wrenching. I did everything for that company at that location. Um, so it just really made me good. I'm really good about working by myself. I don't need to be motivated because that's just naturally happens for me, um, which I'm very blessed for. Um, I'm good about asking questions. If I don't know the answer, I'm not going to tell you that I know the answer. I'll find somebody that knows more than me and I'll figure out the right answer. I'm not just going to be like, well, it could be this because I don't like that. I, I want to be, I want to be sure. You know what I mean? You want to be certain. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. Well, and so, I'm sure your customers appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I, that. I'm a firm believer in not lying. Yep. Well, I love that. And and that was definitely something apparent in the first time in meeting you is, is your level of honesty. And the other thing that really stands out, and even just from all that you're sharing is this perseverance and tenacity and grit about you that clearly, you know, it came about because some of it was just, well, you had to figure it out, but there's also something very intrinsic in you. You just 
aren't going to quit. You know, you're just like scrappy do. I was like, let me, let me get back in there. Let me figure it out. So where, where does that come from, from you? Was there a a mentor or role model or or where do you, where do you think that comes from? Um, I have to say that, so my dad really had the gift of gab in life. Um, And I learned a lot of that from him. Um, Uh He would say these really ironic things to people that always just caught my attention when I was younger Uh and he could talk to anybody. And then as I got older, I was an only child. So my parents would have parties and do this and that. And if I wanted attention, I had to learn how to have an adult conversation really quickly or else I was just a six year old kid standing there and everybody's like, well, I'm not talking to that kid. He doesn't know anything. He's six, right? you know? So I I just had to draw people's attention at an early age and realize it. And like I said, I don't shut up. So I just talked and talked and talked until people would pay attention to me or I would accomplish whatever I was trying to accomplish at that time. I love it. Um, and then as I moved down to Phoenix, um, I got involved with BNI, which is the B- Business Networking International. Mm-hmm. Um, that's greatly helped my public speaking. It's helped me network. It's helped me meet the right people in my life. Sure. And then after taking a class like yours that I took last weekend, it really makes me realize that I'm a natural born leader mm-hmm. and I need to go forward with that um, skill that I have that I've been blessed with. Absolutely. Um, I well, have and- really good communication with people and I just I thrive to make other people better as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you have that natural likability that, and, and I, I know that, you know, just in our conversations and, and from, you know, having you participate in our, our you the leader class, you, you definitely show your heart and, you know, this rough and gruff, you know, <laughs> mechanic, I'm like, he's like a big teddy bear. Look at this guy. So, uh, you know, your, your uh, exterior makes it look like you're all tough, but I know that there's that, that big kind heart inside. And when we were talking um, after you graduated from the class, you were talking a lot about, you know, just how you believe in this honest mechanic approach and how you really want to be known for, for that level of honesty. So, so where does, does that come from, from you? Was it, a bad experience that you had that you said, my gosh, I just, I'll never be that way. I want to be this way. Or was that more of how you were raised or or where does this, you know, need and desire and passion for being honest and forthright come from? Definitely comes from where I was raised. Um, My parents always instilled in me to, you know, love thy neighbor. Right. So you're always, I mean, it's, it's an act of kindness. Like you, you should just pay it forward to people and be polite. It takes so much less energy to be nice than it does to be mean. So I'm Irish, so I naturally used to be angry when I was younger. And when I got past that block that I had, it just became obvious to me that I was set here for a mission. I have a distinct look um, that sets me apart from a lot of people with having a big beard and tattoos. Uh-huh. I tell people, you love me or hate me in 10 minutes. There's no in between with me. Uh-huh. And, and it doesn't matter to me which way you pick. Usually it's not the wrong way. I mean, I'm very approachable Mm -hmm. Um, as far as that goes, but I was just blessed with a natural talent that I don't think that I realized until I was older. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm older and I understand that talent, I'm trying to fine hone it. Yeah. Um, And what I say by that, like, I'm going to take you, the communicator is one, another one of those classes that you guys offer, um, because it's, it's just such a huge thing to do in your life. And it takes so much less effort to be nice. Yeah. And I, and I just, I really, um, I really came to Phoenix to put my mark here. Everybody mm-hmm. knew who I was in Cody. You can show up there tomorrow and say, hey, who's Thad Fitzgerald? And they'll be like, hey, here's his kids. Here was his shop. Here's where he used to live. Because it's a small town and that's what you get. When you sure. move to Phoenix, nobody knows or cares who you are here. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I want to put a distinct mark on myself, not to be like, I don't feel like it needs to be special or anything like that, but just as a comfortable place where people know that they can come and do business with us. Yeah. Um, and and I give that people that sense of security because when you talk to me, you know that I know what I'm talking about. And I don't mm-hmm. mean that as a cockiness. I just mean as a confidence. Sure, um, sure. So I give you that comfortability when you talk to me. And like I said, it, it's just kind of one of those things that I've just honed over the years. And I've put all my, I, I'm finally surrounded by the appropriate people in my life. That's awesome. Um, to where I'm a firm believer and you shouldn't be the smartest person in the room because you don't benefit from that. Mm-hmm. So I surround myself with smart people and it only makes you better. So I have, I'm blessed with good business partners. Um, I've just, I've been, and I got two wonderful kids that I'm trying to hone that to get to that same spot in their lives. Yeah. So it's just, I, I've just been really blessed overall as far as how everything's been working out for me. Fantastic. A, well, it sounds, yeah, it sounds like you're on this, this great path, this awesome trajectory of where you've been and where it's led you. And now, now here and growing Grease Monkey and, you know, expanding the way you have as you're growing the business, how, you know, in this market, it's just so crazy to find, you know, 
great talent and great help. Is that something that you all struggle with, with in terms of keeping this culture of honesty and reliability and all of those things? Is it hard for you to find good people that match that culture? Absolutely. That's probably one of our biggest feats. It's easier for me to do the work than it is to find people to work for me. Right. Um, but what's important though is, is that I realized a long time ago that my I'm only as good as my team. So mm-hmm. if my team doesn't do a good job, I'm not doing a good job. Right. Um, and the most, everybody on my team is important, but the base is important for me is my management team and my mechanics, because they're the ones that I don't have high turnover with. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, the loop techs, they kind of come and go because we're a little bit of a stepping stone business mm-hmm. to where it just kind of introduces them to the field of the business of where they want to go. Mm-hmm. I get a lot of guys from AAI or UTI that go to the automotive schools mm-hmm. um, and they're just learning as they're doing it. So we teach them to hone their skills and they kind of just, some of them stay, but a lot of them move on and go to a dealership or even venture out and do their own thing or go to another shop that they have a different opportunity at. I try to take care of all of my employees or I do take care of all my employees, I should say. Mm-hmm. My managers and my and my mechanics are really the key to my success for my business because it's important that they don't change. Right. So, I mean, people, everything changes. I don't buck change. I'm really good at that. But people don't want to come into my shop and see a new person every time because it makes them feel uncomfortable. And then they're like, man, what is going on here? Like, I don't know anybody here. I, I don't like it because I don't recognize anybody. They don't recognize me. Right. Um, so it's really important that you have that um, same employees on a regular basis. So I, I really get lucky with my management team. I can usually, they stay usually anywhere from three to five years. Okay. Um, I've been super good blessed about that. I try to have strong communication. I offer them any kind of, actually, I'm trying to get my company to jump in with me and see if we can start sending a few of them to your classes, because I feel like it would be a really strong leadership quality that they could have and pass on in their lives as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's great. The the culture that you've, you've built and are continuing to build is fabulous. And yeah, the more, obviously the more time, the more, you know, training, all of those, those things that you invest in your people, obviously the, the more likely they are going to not only grow individually um, in the, in the business, but, you know, in, in, as themselves and in all areas of their life. So what a, what a great gift to give them and also a great return for the business. As you bring on these younger folks, because obviously there's a lot of talk about, you know, oh, this younger generation, this younger generation. And, and it's said oftentimes with a very, uh, a disdain or, you know, kind of a, uh, you know, they just don't have the work ethic or they just don't have the drive, you know, my generation or our parents' generation, you know, you have a lot of those, those conversations and, and hear a lot of those things. Is that your experience with, with younger people that are coming out of the, the UTIs and, and, and those schools and, and coming to you? Do you see that kind of lack of, of desire and work ethic or do you experience something different? I think it's kind of 50, 50. Um, okay. Unfortunately, I mean, I'm not trying to blame people, but if they, if their parents didn't help instill that in them when they were younger, it makes it complicated to have it when you're older. Yeah. So, I mean, some of the kids really have drive and then other ones don't. Yeah. Um, My personal opinion is, is that, so I use an example as I was a really good parent to my kids as a individual sports team parent. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't play football and, and stuff like that. We wrestled and we did rodeo and just because it was easier to motivate my own child than it was for me to motivate a group of kids. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that rudely. I would always take on the task if they ever asked or needed help. It's just that they started handing out participation trophies in life and that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. There's a winner and there's a loser. And I know people don't like to talk about that way, but that's just the way world, the world was designed. Mm -hmm. And so um, I try to make everybody feel good about being on our team. And um, I don't talk down to people. I, try to make sure I have clear communication and they do need that motivation to make them want to advance their own learning. So I try to give them all the tools that they need right off the bat. Mm -hmm. We actually have what they call grease monkey university online. So I have an online, um, like a four or five hour program that I have those guys watch before they even come into the shop just to Mm -hmm. kind of get them used to and see what we expect. And just to give them a rough idea of what, what's going to happen when they start working for us. And so they can help us deliver that, um, excellent customer service that we strive for to pass down. And I, I think that really helps us in the future because so many kids just get shot down right from the beginning or people don't want to put in that extra effort. And that's not their fault. Yeah. That's on us. That's on me as an employer mm-hmm. to provide them the right tools to put in their tool belts to get there. You know, it's, I tell guys, like, I always have to tell them if you're, if you're 10 minutes early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. 
Mm -hmm. um, because that's not the motto that a lot of people have. They think that if we open at eight, they just show up at eight and we go to work. Well, when you say that we open at eight, that means that the doors are open and we're ready to work at eight o'clock. Right. And so sometimes you just have to help that younger generation get there um, just because they just weren't taught that as they were yeah. younger or, or maybe that, you know, whatever the case may be, might mm -hmm. not be their fault. Maybe it was their mentor or whoever it was. Yep. Um, so I've just realized that I, I'm, my job is to be a very good mentor to those people. And so, and, and I have a lot of knowledge that I want to pass down to somebody that wants to know it. Yep. Um, so I'm always happy to be able to try to do that with my guys. Yeah. I mean, what a gift, what a gift. What would you say to, you know, a, a, a young guy or girl that's, you know, getting out of school or, you know, wanting to get into this field, because obviously the trades are, they, they need and deserve attention and help and what a lucrative industry to get into, you know, now more than ever. So what, what would you say as a word of wisdom from all that you've been through on your journey to that next generation? I would say that it's definitely important to go to school, mm -hmm. um, whether it be college or a trade school. Not mm -hmm. everybody likes to go to college, which I understand. I'm a trade school kind of guy, mm -hmm. I'm more of a hands-on experience type person, which yep. truly helps me more. Mm -hmm. But don't let anybody discourage you. If mm -hmm. people tell you you can't do it, then you should work twice as hard to prove them wrong because right. they're wrong. You mm -hmm. have it inside of you. You just have to figure out or have somebody help you bring it out of you. Mm -hmm. um, so the potential is there. You just have to find somebody like me that will encourage you to get there. Yeah. Um, it's very important. Like I said, whether you're a stepping stone business or not, you should treat everybody the way that they're going to be there as a lifetime employee. Yeah. Don't treat anybody better or worse um, as far as that goes. And it's important that you take the hands on time to train them where they need to be. They mm -hmm. don't know what you expect from them if you don't tell them. Sure. People just can't assume in life because they're not going to know. They don't know that because they that's not their industry yet. They're trying to get into that industry and be better. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's up to people like me to help them get there or else you're just not doing what you're supposed to be doing in life. And like I said, it was, it was a different mentality when I was growing up, when I was younger, it was mm -hmm. just some old guy telling you, you were no good and that you needed to work harder and faster and that you weren't doing it right. There was no encouragement back then because that wasn't the system that they made. It was a fear factor system. And now it's not that way. It's a, right. now it's an encouragement system and it's an empowering system and it's, you can do that and you will get it done and you will accomplish all of those things. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like it's very important to help them get on the right path. Yeah. Yeah. So I love to meet young kids that come into the shop and have questions. It's one of my favorite things. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure that that mentor is, is obvious in you. And we've had that conversation for sure. That's, that's just inherent in who you are and having, having been, uh, I guess, sort of raised or brought up in the industry under that sort of tough approach versus the empowering, um, you know, leader, you know, you've got this type mentality. Um, can you speak to, you know, what you think is the better <laughs> or what you feel or believe is the better uh, path there or, or what you see as the big difference? Um, I would have to say that it's definitely, I mean, it definitely has to be the encouraging part of it, mm -hmm. but I mean, but, but it's what you, I tell everybody, just go with your gut. OK, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm a firm believer in that everybody gets a gut feeling in their life. And I know that we all have brains and we all have hearts. Yep. But for me personally, they get in my way. <laughs> um, they they sidetrack me. Uh -huh. They make me feel things that may or may not be true. But I've learned that I always go with my gut feeling. So if I get a gut feeling about something, I don't question it at all anymore, um, because that literally has cost me more money in life than not. I also have had a bad habit of like I tell guys, look. You're going to make mistakes in life and that's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. That's how you learn. Yeah. Um, it just depends on how you learn from the mistake going forward is which way you want to go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's always unfortunate when it costs you money. But for me, like I used to tell people, if it didn't cost me a thousand dollars when I was younger, I didn't learn very well. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it was just part of my upbringing and the way it was for me. Um, yeah. And it was rough and it was brutal, but it's just the way it is. So, yeah. I mean, now it's just, you need it's just so much better to get encouraged now. It wasn't an option when I was younger. They just didn't encourage you that way. Yeah. And so yeah. you just need to find somebody that's very encouraging and, and move forward with it. And don't let anybody tell you you can't do anything because you can't. You can always do it. It's not. An, I mean, especially with everything that goes on in the world and all the different options, online training, classes like you guys offer, um, all the different motivational things that are in the world. There's just no reason for people not to succeed other than if you're lazy. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen to that. I completely, completely agree. So, well, thank you for that. I am, um, I am not sure if you've uh, heard some of our, our episodes or shows in the past, but part of the leadership lowdown uh, involves a series of questions. And these questions I'd love to ask, they originally came from a French um, talk show, but I'd love to incorporate them into this because I think the answers are so interesting and revealing and, and really get to share your personality. So if you're okay with being put a little bit on the spot, I will um, ask them to you and, and feel free to, to say and answer in whatever way you want. Are you good with this? You oh, absolutely. Want? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So question number one, Mr. Thad Fitzgerald, what is your favorite word? Well, I don't know that I'm exactly allowed to tell you that online. Um, <laughs> But it's what probably most sailors and mechanics' favorite word is. <laughs> well, that's coming up. That, that actually is an uh, upcoming question. So the swear um, word is coming up here shortly. But <laughs> I, I think that probably for right now, my favorite thing is um, giver's gain. Love that. I'm a firm believer in paying it forward. Yeah. Um, I got a second chance in life in 2006. Mm-hmm. And so I've completely taken that bull by the horns and I'm a firm believer in paying it forward and doing givers gain. Mm -hmm. Because if you put the effort in, you'll get the effort back. Love it. Um, And it's not even about payment. It's just about putting in the effort. Something will happen to you good in return. Yep. So it's for me, I definitely have to say it's probably givers gain. Love it. Love it. That's a great two words. I love it. (laughs) So what then is your least favorite word? My least favorite word is can't. (laughs) I hate it when people tell me I can't do that because it's not true. Yeah. Can't means you don't want to do it or you don't want to put the effort in to do it. Mm -hmm. And so it's just so, and it's a discouraging word. I don't like discouraging things. Yeah. If you, if I show up to my shop with a really bad attitude, it reflects on my guys all day and gives them all a bad attitude. And it's just like saying, can't, if you go up to your customer and I'm like, Oh, I'm sorry, I can't do that. That's not, that's not a good thing. Even if you don't offer the service, don't tell them you can't say, Hey, we don't provide that service to you, but I have a great recommendation for somebody that does. Yeah. Um, because there's no, that you should, shouldn't be can't, that shouldn't even be a word in the language for me. <laughs> it's just, it, it, that's worse than a cuss word for me. Yeah, no, I, I agree wholeheartedly because there's always a solution or a recommendation or a workaround, something, something that you can do to be problem solving. So I love that. Uh, so what would you say that turns you on either creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? So I always love a new challenge. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy when somebody comes to me and tells me that um, their vehicle is too old or that somebody won't work on their stuff or that they just, they, once again, here comes that word, can't, that because <laughs> they're like, I can't do that because it's too old. Harley has this weird thing that if your bike's 10 years old, they don't want to work on it anymore because they just deem that they don't need to, and that's not how it should be. And so I really take those on as challenges. Mm -hmm. Um, And the other thing for me that's really inspiring for me is my children, because Mm -hmm. I want to set a good example for them. I want to be the best example for them. And I want them to lead as they want to, or do what they want to do. I don't want them ever to be discouraged and Mm -hmm. think that they can't accomplish something. Yeah. My oldest son is a professional bull rider. He's been riding bulls since he was seven. And to wow. me, that's just, that's a fantastic thing. And now he started his own business at 19 years old. And so it doesn't get any more inspiring than that. Inspiring. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, clearly the the love and attention and um, all the hard work that you've put into uh, yourself and, and, and in turn raising them is a uh, certainly showing. So that's fabulous. Love it. Love it. Uh, what would you say then turns you off? I think what turns me off is people that are negative. Mm -hmm. Be having a negative attitude is just so unproductive. And and I mean, it's just, it's not necessary. I mean, it's so much easier as I, if I meet you for the first time and I'm like, Hey, you know, um, you just did a really great job today. It's so much easier. And then that person's happy. Um, I actually have a great example. I had a one-to-one with a gal on Wednesday at a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. I was sitting next to another gal that I had no idea who she was. And I was waiting for the gal that I was going to have a one-to-one with. She was having a great conversation on the phone with her son. You could tell that she was really under pressure. And I just reached out to her when she got off the phone and I said, hey, I know that you don't know me and I hope you don't find this as rude, but it sounds like you're a really great mom and you should keep that up. Um, I can tell that you really, uh, and then we had a conversation and we met and she came to my BNI meeting and now we're going to become friends. I mean, it just, it, it just takes that one act of encouragement to somebody. 
mm-hmm. even from a total stranger yeah. that just makes you're like, wow, I really can do that today. Or that just helped me get over the edge of what I was dealing with today. And just even if you just took that split second to be nice to somebody, it's all yeah. it takes. So very true. You are speaking my language, my friend. It is absolutely true. Those little acts of kindness, they they all add up. And we don't know what anybody else is going through. We don't know what their morning was like, their life is like, their situation is like. So yeah, that, right. that brief encounter can can be not only game-changing, but sometimes even life-changing. So yes. good on you, my friend. I love it. I love it. So here we go. Now you get to say it. And this is internet radio, so feel free to share. You, you can say it. What is your favorite curse word? It's fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what everybody likes to say. That's just yeah. what it is. I mean, I'm like a sailor when it comes to certain things like that. Mm-hmm. I know that it's not everybody's favorite word, but I think yeah. it's like, it's it's just short of being the word of international love. It seems to be the one word that everybody knows how to say. <laughs> um, and they know how to say it really well. You know what I mean? You can use um, it in it, so many contexts, which by does, the it, way, this has come up on uh, previous shows when when folks have chosen that word. There is actually a video about how you can use that word in like 20 different contexts with 20 different meanings. So you got to Google the video because it's pretty hilarious, but uh, yeah, it's, we'll it's definitely very, be check- I will definitely be very, very out. versatile. Very, very versatile. I love it. So what sound or noise do you love? I love the sound of a Harley Davidson motorcycle. <laughs> how did uh, I know you were going to say that? <laughs> I've been chasing that sound since I was five. My best story that I tell people is, is my dad lived in Northern California uh-huh. We were fishing in the Feather River Canyon. I was literally five or six years old. Um, the Hells Angels just happened to be having this huge rally down the road. I dropped all my stuff. I went up and stood by the road, and I just watched all these thousands of bikes go by me. And oddly enough, some big old biker just stopped to check on me because he just saw some random kid standing on the road all by himself. And he talked to me, and he let me check out his bike, and he let me sit on it, and he asked me where my dad was, and I told him, and he's like, well, shouldn't you be down there? And I'm like, no, man, I... I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Like I'm checking out your guys' stuff. That's, that's my goal in life. Um, And so you just have to pick your own path and don't let anybody discourage you from it. I've literally been chasing that sound since I was five and I am the best Harley mechanic that I can be. That's awesome. Um, So, and that that was my goal and, and I accomplished that. How great is that? I love it. Your passion for what you do is so uh, electric. I love it. So what sound or noise do you hate? I probably hate the whole chalkboard, the nails on the chalkboard yeah. type sounds. Yeah. Any yeah. kind of that screeching, mm-hmm. goosebump making noise that you can get. Yeah. Um, yep. It reminds me of the word can't. <laughs> <laughs> if can't had a sound, it would sound yeah, like that. <laughs> it just makes you cringe. You know what I mean? Totally. Oh, I totally do. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Ew. I don't like it either. I don't like it either. So what profession other than your own would you love to attempt? I really want to start being more of a leadership role. Mm -hmm. So I would like to be, I want to do more positive speaking, Mm -hmm. like stuff like that we're doing today. I really enjoy it used to be out of my comfort zone and now it's not. So I really like it. I really like being put on the spot. I'm very good under pressure. I can really shoot from the cusp as far as talking. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, I have the gift of gab. So (laughs) I love it. Um, so, um, I, I really want to do more public speaking and more mentoring type mm-hmm. of stuff That's great. Um, because I really want to help people get better in their lives and do better things. Yeah. Um, yeah. It comes so, from a, a great heart space. I love it. Absolutely. So if, if you then had to think of what profession would you never, ever want to go after or attempt, what would that be? I don't want to be an underwater welder. <laughs> I don't think that water and electricity moves very well together. That? And they have to wear these big helmets. And I tell you that just because I have a buddy that's an underwater welder and I watch videos that they post and I'm super claustrophobic. So I don't think I could be in that big suit and be underwater all that time and be like, oh, look, there's a shark and I can't do anything about it. You know? That sounds horrific. I didn't even know that was a thing. So, and, and that is certainly not one that's ever come up before on the show. So underwater welding, note to self, I'm with you on that one. Not going to go for that. They make a ton of money though. I mean, I'm sure they probably, probably do because who the heck wants to do that, right? Most of us make all year, but still not motivational for me. Yeah. You're like, that's not enough of a driver. Thank you very much. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Well, one final question for you is if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? You won. Oh, I like that. I like that. Because if you make it, you won. And if you <laughs> don't make it, I tell everybody, 
it's kind of like the whole liking me thing, right? Mm-hmm. My joke is, is that I moved to Phoenix because in case I'm getting sent to hell, I'm going to get practice as the bus driver before I get there. <laughs> and if not, and I get to go the other way, then I won. Hey, I love it. I love it. Well, yeah, when, when the game is over, at least you know you won. I love it. Well, I can't tell you how much fun this conversation has been, Thad, and your, your beaming personality, your passion for what you do is so apparent. So um, I really thank you for making time to, to share a little bit about yourself and your background with us. If any folks want to reach out or connect with you, what is the best or easiest way for them to learn more about you or Grease Monkey? So they can reach out to any of my shops. The phone number at one of my shops is 602-482-3525. Okay. Um, my personal email is thadfitzgerald7 at gmail.com. Okay. Or my personal cell phone number is 307-272-7458. Love I it. love meeting new people. Um, if I don't answer you, please leave me a message and I'll definitely respond to you. Awesome. And any word of wisdom you'd like to leave the listeners with today? Any uh thought or or a piece of advice that was given to you that you'd like to share? Don't give up. If somebody tells you that you can't do it, do it anyway. Who cares what those people think? (laughs) I personally could care less if you like me or hate me, but I know that um, the one thing that I'm set here on earth to do is be a good example for my kids and anybody else that wants to meet me. And so you should always be a firm believer in yourself and pay it forward and just be a good human being. It's so much easier. Love it. Completely agree with you, my friend. And it's very apparent that you uh, live your word. So thank you again for being with us today, Thad. Really, really appreciate it. And for our listeners, you've been listening to Leadership Lowdown, hosted by me, Jody Lowe, and powered by Un Improved and Conscious Capitalism Arizona. At Un Improved, we are passionate about building companies' biggest and best asset, their people. To learn more about our programs and classes, feel free to reach out at uandimproved.com. That's our website, or you can reach me directly. Jody J O D I at youandimprove.com. Thank you again for listening, and we look forward to talking with you soon. Mm-hmm.